Hi, it's Dan here from Flexible, and today's video is all about what you can do now YouTube has gotten rid of true view skippable videos. Let's get stuck in. Okay, so what has Google said? Right, they've replaced um, the true view skippable ads with video action uh, ads, okay? Which means that before where you had the option to have a creative, which was just being able to show in that, that clickable um, format, you can't do that anymore because they've replaced it with essentially what are the old uh, um, kind of responsive ads, which means that once you up your, upload your video creative, they're just shown in lots of lots of different spaces all over all over Google's ad network. Okay, which is um, which is great um, because Google, you know, you lose some control, but Google has said that they want to do this because they believe they can get you more conversions. So if you're listening to me now and you're freaking out about the the, the skippable ads, the Trivia skippable ads you have running, don't worry. Um, because they will continue to run, but, and, but Google have said that in um, early 2022, and we are in early 22, they're gonna completely remove them and replace them um, with the video action ad format, which you're gonna have to get used to pretty quickly. What are the main differences between TrueView skippable ads and video action ads in Google? Uh, well, there's a, there's a few things that I'm gonna touch on. The first one is that the, and the main one that everyone's freaking out about is that TrueView skip, skippable ads, you had the ability just to run those ads by themselves, okay? But with, uh, with the, the new option that they're putting together, these responsive ads, you have no control whatsoever, which means that a lot of people are freaking out, but I'm here to help guide you through that process now, so don't freak out too much, okay? Let's look at some good news, okay? Video action ads um, ena enable you to get more conversions and leads, which is what we want as lead gens, obviously, um, across um, placements and areas, you know, all over the internet, okay? It doesn't just have to be uh, uh, in front of the YouTube platform, okay? It can be on and off YouTube, which is, which is powerful. Um, because as we know, as the machine learning grows and the algorithms get better and better, uh, you want basically to be able to give Google more control with where they're showing your, your video creative. It's just that they're um, not allowing you to kind of break that down and show them in specific little networks of the, the YouTube advertising platform. You're losing control basically, but that is a good thing, trust me. Okay, so one of the major differences with the video action ads that's probably the most significant thing when you're uploading the creative is that uh, Google is asking you to, to give much longer um, headlines and descriptions um, alongside the normal copy you'd have associated alongside your YouTube um, creative, your video, okay? Which means that you're obviously just gonna be able to show, um, YouTube, YouTube is gonna be able to show your ad in lots of different places because they've got lots of different options to spin the, the variation of the video and the headlines and the copy. So they're just being shown in a lot more places and you're giving over control, as I keep saying, to, to Google. Okay, so is video action ads and removing tribute skippable ads a good or a bad thing? Um, you know, there's gonna be people in both camps. There's gonna be the people that say that they're gonna lose a small segment of the market where they're able to put their YouTube skippable ads on a placement and they get, where they have control over something that's just nailing it for them. They're gonna lose that. But on the other hand, you have um, uh, newbies or people that are really good at writing copy and understanding the market and the creative um, that are able to do really well out of this because they're not someone that's super analytical. And I think that's what Google's trying to achieve here, right? They're, they're trying to help the average marketer, the average business owner, to be able to put up an offer and a creative that kind of works anywhere on the market, let alone trying to have to find that little kind of sub-segment. So, for me, you're gonna have the, the advanced media buyers, the analytical types. By the way, that's not me. Even though I've got an engineering background, I like to work on the, um, you know, understanding the market, understanding the customer, understanding the different angles, spinning the offer a hundred different ways. That's what I like doing. And I think that's where the real kind of value is and the future of, of kind of um, lead generation rather than kind of the analytical media buying bits. So. Um, you know, as I said, there's going to be people in both camps. Me personally, I think this is a good thing.
So what would we do if it was us in your shoes? Okay, flexible, we obviously um, run ads, we're a lead generation agency, we also teach lead generation. So, so we see a lot of people coming through our community um, and our, on our weekly calls and inside our groups that are kind of freaking out about this and are worried about how to, how to handle the situation. Um, and I've touched on, on this before. Um, you know, for me, the th what you want to be able to do is focus on coming up with the angles into the market, okay, that are going to make the difference. And not, you know, this is important as well. I might go a little bit off topic here, but it, it doesn't matter where your ads are shown if you have um, something that's really enticing to your your customer avatar, the person you're advertising to. So for example, I, I was on a call uh, today with one of my students and he was um, talking about a real estate offer. All right, I'm definitely going off tangent here, but I think you'll find this interesting. So he was advertising uh, new developments in Dubai um, and his, his ad was something along the lines of, uh, I think he was targeting expats that might, be, might, have, might lose their visa if they lose their job, okay? Because a lot of them are, are getting their visa paid for by their company. And the flip side of that, which I think is a really good hook, is that if these people buy a residential property in Dubai, then they automatically get the visa. So for me, that is a really good example of an, an ad that is going to cut through the um, ad networks because it's something that's going to appeal to that subset of the audience, all right? Um, and one thing that he was doing, uh, which where he was making a mistake is he was trying to sell a development within the, the YouTube creative, okay? And that's, that's, that's a problem as well, okay? You want your landing page and your funnel to be able to capture the lead. You don't wanna put that inside the ad, all right? So you want to be able to develop intrigue. So um, you could the, the YouTube ad might say something along the lines of, if you're an expat and you're worried about losing your visa, then there's a way that you can do this and not risk you losing your job and being relocated um, as a family. Okay, which means that there's a lot of intrigue in the ad. You're selling the click to the landing page rather than selling the development. Okay, let the funnel capture the lead. Don't expect the ad to do that. Okay, and that's um, an example of, of why it doesn't matter where you're showing your ad across all these networks, okay? It matters that you have something that's really gonna get people's attention and get the click that'll lead to the landing page, which will then generate the lead, okay? So in a roundabout way, what I'm trying to say is that um, if you can focus on that, the angle, you know, selling the service, selling the click, not the service, um, and using the collateral that you might already have from Google Discovery, um, or you know what's already working in your true true view ads, or what might be working on Facebook for your offer. If you can kind of combine them all into your um, your creative that you have now with the, these, these new responsive ads, then that's when things are going to hum and work well for you. Okay, so I've gone off topic here a little bit, but I hope you understand my situation with what I think um, you should be doing and what we would do in your situation. So what is the, the byproduct of uh, the new uh, video action ads that, that uh, YouTube or Google have introduced, okay? So if you can get your, your offer, your angles into the market, you can sell the, the click instead of the service and you, you have all of this dialed in. It's not that complicated, really. What we've seen is there's gonna be cheaper clicks, cheaper CPMs, um, and roughly at the moment, because you're showing your ads in a lot more places, you, you might be getting some spammy clicks and stuff like that. So the CPCs are kind of dropping and cost per lead is remaining about the same, but it means now that there's a lot more volume, which is really um, the whole point of what Google has said, you know, we're gonna get you more leads and they're not going to um, fall short on that promise either. If you've enjoyed this video, please give us a like so we know to create more content like this moving forward. Uh, if you have any questions about what I've um, explained in the video today, um, then please do uh, type in the comment box below. And also, please subscribe to our channel because you know it's good stuff. We do some good lead generation um, education inside our channel, and uh, you'll be the first to know when any new videos are created. So please do subscribe. 
I've got a free game plan that you can download. It's really good stuff and it shows you how to kind of enter the pay per lead market and performance marketing game without risking any of your own money or anything like that. It's, as I said, it's good stuff. So please click on the link in the posted comments and uh, enjoy. Take care.